Yeah. I'm sure you're doing a great job for ER <laughs> as well. Well, th thank you both. Thank you. Thanks, Emmanuel. Talk to you later. Okay. Now, our next guest tonight, I would like to introduce Father John Harris. Father John was with us back in July, and he is the prior of the Dominican community in Newbridge, County Kildare. And uh, Father spoke to us back in July about Our Lady and her yes and her feet and the difference between the natural and the supernatural life. But tonight, Father's going to speak to us about um, the, um, the Christmas is not a fairy tale. So take it away, Father John. <laughs> and we're delighted to see you without the mask even. <laughs> there you are much. now. We decided, you know, the night that's in it, it's Gaudete. We have to rejoice. <laughs> and us... Us Limerick people have uh, something else to rejoice about tonight. <laughs> Very now, I see, can I take the mask off? <laughs> I can, that's okay. Between plugs and everything else, you know. How is everybody this, this evening? And yeah, we're great, wish Father. you Thank every you joy much. and happiness to you all on this holy season. Um, it's all very nice and wonderful. And I just want to say a few words to you tonight. Um, Christmas isn't a fairy tale. <laughs> I think before we, and maybe Kavanagh brought that out so beautifully in, mm. his, um, in, in his poem there, that there is something else going on here that's very serious. And I'm glad to think that Maria reminded us of it also in her wonderful presentation of stories. So I want to begin saying to you, you know, you may not know this, but there are three possible masses a priest can say on Christmas Day. He can say the mass at midnight, he can say mass at dawn, and he can say the mass during the day. And quite strange for the church, there are actually three different masses. There's different prayers, and there's different readings. The gospel on midnight mass is St. Luke's teaching us about what happened on the first Christmas about the, the setting in time uh, uh, with Quirinius and all of this, it's setting it in it's secular history, that this was a real event in real time when Joseph and Mary went to Bethlehem. And then extraordinarily, the angels appear talking to the shepherds. And, uh, and then the shepherds go to Bethlehem. And funnily enough, at the reading of um, that gospel that night, the angels leave and the angels sing glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to men of goodwill. And that's the end of it. The dawn mass, it continues. When the angels had gone back into heaven, the shepherd said, let us go and see if this is true. And they go to Bethlehem and they find our blessed lady and the angel our, and the child Jesus and everything as the angels said. And we hear those wonderful lines about Mary, which bring us deeply into the mystery that she is. Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in her hearts, in her heart. And then the shepherds went back glorifying God. Well, I suppose that's the great story of Bethlehem and Christmas. And, you know, it's a wonderful time at that stage to be able to, to think on what happened on that Christmas night and the crib. And I suppose it brings us into the, the beauty of uh, Christmas, the mystery, the crib, baby Jesus, our blessed lady, St. Joseph, the ox, the lamb, the shepherd, the angels, the star, what we're very familiar with. But when you say the mass of the day, which is to some ways the main mass of Christmas, the church doesn't talk about what happened in the crib. And it can be very difficult at times to do this because um, I remember when I was a young priest in Tala, I used to be on the family mass and all the kids would be there with their toys and we worked out a whole thing about they would bring their toys up and I'd bless them and it all became rather chaotic. But the gospel has nothing got to do with the crib and Jesus and Joseph and Mary. It's from St. John. And it's the very beginning of St. John's gospel. Is In the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things came into be, and not one thing had its being but through him. All that came to be had life in him, and that life was the light of men. And it said, the word was a true light that enlightens all people, and he was coming into the world. 
He was in the world. It had its being through him and the world did not know him. He came to his own domain and his own people did not accept him. And so it's quite strange, you know, here you are the main mass of the day and we're not talking about the crib and Mary and Joseph. We're talking about the mysterious reality of who this child actually is. He is God from the beginning. And he has come into this world. And the real story of Christmas isn't, if you like, the fairy tale. It's a very serious reality. God has become one of us. In verse 14, we read, the word became flesh and lived among us. The Greek says he pitched his tent. He was God among his people. And this is the real story of Christmas. The real mystery. God entering into our world. And why has God entered into our world? There was a big conversation in the Middle Ages about this truth. Why did God become man? Now, some theologians said he became man because it was the high point of creation. God being in union with creation. God and creation united together. But St. Thomas Aquinas, a Dominican, said, no, that's all very nice and it's very beautiful to think about it. But he said, the only reason we have in Scripture, why did God become man? We have it in the creed. For us men and for our salvation. He became man. He came to save us. That's the heart of the Christmas story. It's not a fairy tale. Why would God enter into our world? And the reason? Because our world is broken. We need saving. We need God to come into this world and to save us. Maria talked earlier on tonight about, you know, as Frank Duff so always went on about the price of a soul. What is it is to have, to help someone to be the instrument by which somebody's soul might be saved by bringing them back into the church again, bringing them back into the life of grace and the life of the sacrament. And this is the heart of what Christmas is about. It's about us allowing the Lord to really enter into not just Bethlehem, not just 2,000 years ago, but allowing the Lord God himself into my soul and bringing me into a world that we see the angels rejoice. Why did the angel say peace on earth and good wed to men? It wasn't just about, well, let's all feel happy as we do for Christmas. There used to be a, an old Christmas carol, some a secular Christmas carol. What a, bless, what a blessed place the world would be if it had that Christmas feeling all year. As if Christmas was about the happy feeling we all get and wishing everybody a happy Christmas. That's not what Christmas is about. Where does this happy feeling come? It comes from being saved. It comes from receiving Jesus. Mary pondered all these things in, in her heart. And the invitation is for you and me to receive Jesus. That's the, that's the Christmas story. It's very easy to look at him in the crib. But to go to communion on Christmas morning. And truly with the help and the grace of Mary, our mother, to receive Jesus with her openness on that Christmas morning, to welcome Jesus, the Savior of the world, into our, my world. The crib isn't in Bethlehem. The story isn't in Bethlehem. The story is in my heart and my soul. 
And there is the seriousness of Christmas. It is ultimately about heaven and hell, isn't it? The salvation of souls. And I do think, and I've said this before, and it's a story, and to some extent I'm going back to what I said the last time I spoke at these conferences. This is a very dangerous time for people during this lockdown. A time of people to lose their souls. You know, you spoke there earlier on about, you know, when you're on the Pellegrinazio and the woman hadn't gone to mass for two years because she'd stopped going because of her sickness. My worry and concern is how many people will not come back to mass and the sacraments because they believe it's not necessary. They've got out of the way of it. This morning when I got up here in Newbridge and it was pouring rain, I was wondering, will anybody turn up or will they all turn onto the web camera? And someone said to me, coming into Mass, oh, I was tempted to stay in this morning, Father, and put on the web camera. Tempted to stay at home because we've got used to staying at home. And is it okay to stay at home and watch Mass on the telly rather than going into the church and receiving the Blessed Eucharist? I mean, the angels said to the shepherds, this wonderful thing has happened in Bethlehem. Now, the, the shepherds could have said, that's nice, but Bethlehem's a bit far away now this hour of the night. I think I'll stay at home. And should we know the story anyway? And you could say that the angels, to some extent, was the, was the web camera of the, of the time of our blessed Lord. But no, the, disciple, the shepherds said, no, let us get up and go into Bethlehem and see that this thing is true. And that's the invitation. Let's get out of our houses. Stop watching this, the, the, the web camera and actually go into the church to receive our blessed Lord, body, blood, soul, and divinity in the blessed Eucharist and allow Jesus to be alive in my soul. The only way we know for definite that the Lord lives in the Christian soul is through, is through the sacraments. The sacraments are the normal way for Jesus to be born in our souls. Now, can the Lord work outside the sacraments? Of course he can, but that's God. But the normal way is through the sacraments. It is through prayer. It is through us keeping in contact with Jesus in the depths of our soul. And it's by prayer and by receiving the sacraments and by living the Christian life in love for each other, that's how we save our souls and go to heaven. Remember, Jesus became man, became one of us for one reason and one reason only. Well, maybe he came for many reasons, but the main reason, he came to die. God as God cannot die. God as man can die. And our blessed Lord took on a human flesh and entered fully into the human condition. And so deeply into the human condition that he went through everything we go through. The sadness, the pain, the suffering, the loneliness, the fear. He went into the Garden of Gethsemane. He didn't stay at home and watch it on the telly. He went into our human condition and lived and brought his love into our human condition. That's the incarnation. He went to the cross and he died. You know, today is Gaudete Sunday. And, and, you know, one of the reasons it's interesting, why did Christianity, if you like, become so victorious, popular almost in the pagan world? Why did Christianity become the religion of the empire? Because it brought hope. It brought forgiveness. It brought healing. And fundamentally, it brought a question to the biggest question we have. Death. Is death the end? And we know in Jesus it's not. The resurrection of the dead. And so it answers our deepest fears and our deepest concerns with the life of Jesus, our Savior. So that's how Christ has entered into our world. And that's what Christmas is all about. Yes, we can stand back at the crib, and it's very beautiful to stand back at the crib 
and be taken in by the beauty, and we should. I love sitting at the crib and watching our blessed Lord and our lady and St. Joseph. And, and I, I personally, I love listening to um, Handel's Messiah as I sit at the crib. But we must go beyond it. I am the crib. I am Bethlehem. God has come into the world for me, into my world. It's easy for me to look at Bethlehem. It's easy for me to think of 2,000 years ago. But what about me now? My world now. My life now. And to know the joy and the happiness of Christ. Today, you know, we had that wonderful line of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. I want you to be happy. You know, and it struck me that line could just as well be the motto for the modern world. I want you to be entertained, I suppose the modern world would say. We don't want to put up with suffering, sorrow, pain. We have the tablets, we have everything. You know, we're looking for the vaccine that's going to be the great exit out of this terrible 2020. So the world wants us to be happy. That's true. But the church wants us to be happy. But there's a difference in the happiness. The happiness of the world is entertainment and distraction. St. Paul says, I want you to be happy. And how does he say it? To pray always. Prayer. And what's prayer? Our communion with Jesus. Jesus alive in my heart and soul and mind and body. There's prayer. There is Jesus. When the incarnation becomes flesh and blood in my heart and soul and life. And I know in the depths of my soul, I am loved. Somebody understands me. Someone cares for me. There is the root of my happiness. Not because I'm distracted by drugs or drink or sex or the latest television program. That I'm gone away from myself. And I'm afraid to be by myself. And afraid to think of my situation. That's the modern world's entertainment. No, I want you to be happy. Truly happy. When you pray. When Jesus is born in your life and in your soul and in your body. That's what Christmas is all about. It's not about a fairy tale. God is not a fairy godmother who waves a magic wand and makes my life perfect. But a God who truly enters in and into that entrance, he brings himself, the Lord and I. I often think, you know, my life as a priest, is, it's almost um, in some ways lived out at the moment of giving out Holy Communion. When I give Jesus, the risen Lord, in the Blessed Eucharist, and the person receives Jesus. That's my life as a priest, to facilitate that communion, to facilitate God entering into the world of the person at that moment. And then I can go away. My job is done. It's not about me. It's about the Lord and you entering into love and communion. That's the real story of Christmas. Yes. It happened in Bethlehem in the time of Quirinius. Yes, it did happen 2,000 years ago. But our celebration of it is not about 2,000 years ago. God came into the world to the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary so that he could become alive in your life and my life. Pope Frank Benedict had a wonderful thing soon after he was elected. He's up at the Eucharist. He said, God became man in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary so that he could become the bread of the Eucharist 
so that I could receive him. I'd say even better if I could improve on Benedict XVI. God created the world so that he could become man in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, so that he could become the bread of the Eucharist, so that I could receive him and be filled with the life of grace. That's the real beauty of Christmas. And so tonight, this Gaudete Sunday, this rejoicing Sunday, I want you to be happy. And I say again, I want you to be truly happy. How? Pray at all times, St. Paul said, and give God thanks, our Heavenly Father. That is what Christmas is about. If Jesus isn't born in my soul, if he's not alive in my life and my soul, then Christmas is a fairy tale. Then it is just something out there 2,000 years ago. But this is a real story. Because the real story of the world is about heaven and earth. The real story of my life is about my eternal salvation or my eternal damnation. And Jesus entered into the world to save us. So we should be happy because we know the story. And the story is real. It's Jesus coming to you. That's what we need to realize in the beauty of this Christmas season. Think of the angel coming to Mary. Think of the priest coming to you with the blessed Eucharist. Jesus wants to take flesh and blood in the flesh and blood of your life. He loves you so much. He loves each one of us so much. That is the joy of our happiness. So brothers and sisters, yes, I wish you all a very happy Christmas. But I mean that from the depths of my soul as a priest. I want you to have a happy Christmas with Jesus alive in your soul. I want you to be happy. I want you to go to confession for Christmas. I want you to open your heart and your soul to Jesus in that most personal of sacraments. Because the other sacraments we, we celebrate in groups, confession we celebrate personally. It's my story, how I need Jesus to save me, how I need his grace to bring me to deeper knowledge and love. So I invite you to be a happy Christmas. Go to confession. I you, invite you to have a happy Christmas, receive Jesus in the blessed Eucharist, in a soul filled with grace and broken with sin. That's what Christmas is all about. And when we do that, we can invite the rest as well. So a very Merry Christmas to you all. And I wish you all the best and the happiness of Christmas. Thank you, ladies. Uh -huh.